Hi, I'm Debbie Braun, President of the Aspen Chamber Resort Association, and you have just tuned in to ACRA's Election Forum. I am happy to say I have two uh, candidates running for city council today, um, Bert and Skippy. Welcome. I feel like you don't even need an introduction because you guys have been working hard for the last couple months. So. Thanks, Debbie. But welcome. Um, and I want to remind everybody that this year, did you not know, things have changed to March. That's when we're going to be doing our voting on March 5th. So I highly encourage everyone to get out, talk, to, um, look up in your local papers, Aspen Public Radio, Grassroots Television. There's so much about the candidates out there right now. So please do your due diligence, get out there and vote. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Great. Well, I just have a few questions for you today um, and really they're coming to you from our business community. So, Bert, I'm going to start with you if that's all right. Certainly. Are you scared? Are you ready to do this? <laughs> that's okay. What I do. Um, Bert, everyone's talking about more affordable housing. Um, where can we build within the urban growth boundary, and how does that fit into your idea of the carrying capacity? Would you be willing to build higher to accommodate affordable housing? So, there are two pots of affordable housing one is the uh, RET uh, transfer tax, and yes. one is the uh, mitigation. Okay. And if mitigation uh, is taken care of by developers, we don't have to figure out necessarily where that's going to be. That may be on site, for example, uh, with Lift One. If there was uh, on site and the, the uh, workers could work, walk to work, they wouldn't then be displacing other, other workforce in town looking for housing. So as long as the mitigation covers 100% of what they're generating, that pot's taken care of. Okay. Then the only pot left is the uh, transfer tax. And that's what the city is working on, and that's what we have BMC West for, for instance, Burling Game for. We had a chance at Bank Smuggler; it didn't have a support from the majority council. But that uh, that second half or second pot is what, uh, which is the RET, can address the, um, the people selling out, the gentrification of town, uh, the retirees, the. Um, businesses, the mitigation that hasn't been paid uh, or built in the past 30 years, and uh, the mitigation on development should cover everything else. So would you be willing to support higher up? For higher up? I have not. We for raise, affordable housing? No. 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 Okay. It, it's, uh, it doesn't work. It push it. What happens if you push back too hard on affordable housing and it ends up in a place where all the neighbors are unhappy with it? then the program gets a bad reputation and it doesn't move forward. You have to be able to walk by a building and not know that it's affordable housing. It has to be integrated into the sure. community. That's, uh, so you don't walk by and say, well, that one's 10 stories tall, so that must be affordable housing. There are communities in the world you've probably traveled to that you know you can see the buildings that are affordable housing. Mm -hmm. and that's not what we want in Aspen. We want everyone to be uh, pretty much the same. Okay. So. Uh, you know, I think, to Bert's credit, um, on lift one, he's absolutely right. And I would have said the same thing if I'm on council. You don't sacrifice affordable housing for that. But what I find interesting about Bert's answers on affordable housing, because it's something that comes up once every four years in your campaigns, is the distinction between the stated position and the action. So Bert is for affordable housing when it is a excuse to be anti-development. However, when it's affordable housing versus development, Bert is anti-affordable housing. That's why he campaigned against Burlingame. So if you have members of your constituency that need to hire employees, um, you know, I think the question for them is, would we be better as a community with 200 less families in it? Um, I don't think so. And what I look for first in a candidate as a voter is someone who is straightforward and honest. I believe Bert is absolutely principled, and I think it's one of his best qualities. But when it comes to communicating with the voters, it seems like everything gets filtered through something that sounds good that actually has another intention. When we talk about mitigation rates, right? I'm the only candidate proposing we go back to 60% in town. Bert's not proposing that. You know, Linda's not proposing that. Rachel's not proposing that. I am, and I think we should house them. But if we mitigate at any rate over the amount we intend to house, because we expect some people to live down Valley, then all we're doing is putting a tax on our businesses, a tax on the taxpayer, those people living in affordable housing. We just raise the price of their hamburger. Uh, and really all it is is a break to development, which is Bert's real end goal. And I just wish he would come out and say that. Well, Skippy, 
how are you going to implement some of your ideas? So for, I, I'd like to respond to that, which you said we could earlier. Well, yeah. Because this, this was an attack on me rather than what we had earlier, which was I was answering your question. It's not an attack so on you, Bert. I did not, when I, when I answered, I did not use Skippy's name at all. I think it's an and attack so, no, on it, not it's building an, affordable housing was, in Burlingame, et cetera. It, it was an attack on, on me, and I, and I don't take that lightly. Please sure. answer. So the... Uh, the affordable housing needs to be taken care of by mitigation. And miti if mitigation, as you proposed on Lift One, is reduced to almost nothing. I didn't propose um, that. And you can look you, at the record on, the, on, on the PNZ, PNZ where minutes, three times PNZ, I said... It doesn't matter what you said. You pass it on to council. Well, you vote it. It's what you vote, not what you say. And if you if what you vote counts different than what you say, then that's that's you. No, it's, Bert. We, I think what you vote is more important than what you say. Bert, you so know we, about... No, 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 allow me to... Yeah. You know how PNZ works. You I served do. on PNZ. And I, and I spent three I voted terms chairing PNZ. What I believed. And in every packet you read, I yeah. was extremely clear I that we should minutes. have full affordable housing. In addition on PNZ, when we sent things up to you, you want to talk about voting? When we sent things up to you, the three recent projects the city's developed, all three of those projects, we said, hey, as the crow flies, looking down, half of this space is parking lot, right? Which means we're making a value statement that an empty parking space or an empty car are more important to this community than workers and families. Let's explore alternative parking solutions, stacked, underground, offsite, whatever it may be, and let's add units there. I am for more density and affordable housing. We have a crisis that needs to be solved. There will be trade-offs, we have to make them. What did, led by Bert, our council do? They ignored that. And in one instance, on 488, you guys actually lopped units off for three feet of height in a parcel that was adjacent to open space. So if you want to talk about voting records, that's yours. Okay, that's time out, time out. That's the county. Um, so. Let me just follow up with Skippy here. Your ideas aren't necessarily new. How are you sure. going to overcome those roadblocks that Bert and others have come up against? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And I'm not running as a savior that's got all the answers. And I'm sure that I will falter in some places. I think what I have a history of is taking ideas and putting action and seeing results. So the city for two decades said they wanted to get young people involved in politics. Well, we created NextGen and then got several things actually accomplished, including uh, funding and support for young entrepreneurs and businesses. Um, when I was concerned about growth in our community, I joined PNZ and was elected chair three times after a term as co-chair and really worked to reform the culture there so it wasn't so acrimonious between the applicant, the community, and the, the commission itself. When for 20 years we've been trying to change our election date uh, to get more people voting, to hear the voice of our entire community, we went out and actually changed the date, something that Bert opposed on the premise that he would like certain people to not vote. So I think that I have a, a record of putting down the rubber to the road, um, listening first to everyone, even if we disagree, building consensus, and then succeeding. And that's the approach I would take, but I, I can't guarantee that I'll succeed. So I have to respond to that, because again, it's an attack, and I think this is not what we're here for, but that's okay. The uh, attack was that I opposed the voting date change. The, the voting date change has resulted in the fewest candidates running for council. You have the fewest choices that you've had since 2013. So it's already failed. We don't have a, a broad uh, selection of candidates. And we'll see about the turnout and the runoff. The turnout in, the, in this first round will be based on a, a billion dollar, half a billion dollar development that's driving, spending an enormous amount of money campaigning. Just, just to so, be clear. But that was, if, you, would, if mm. you want to keep mentioning my name in every single answer that you provide, that's OK. Sure. But I'm going to respond to each one of those. Because I think it's, it's not, important for you voters to know. On your own. I think it's important for voters to know what we stand for. Exactly. Right? And I have stood for an inclusive community where we listen to everyone. Mm -hmm. Your approach has been the opposite. You regularly talk about resort versus community. Uh, stoke fears over young versus old. Um, I sat in a council meeting where we were talking about whether citizens, which I went on the ballot, which should weigh in on decisions as they relate to education or power, et cetera. Uh, and the, the city manager uh, made the point that, you know, we need to make these decisions in-house because they represent the entire community. And you responded that, no, we only represent the voting community. And when pushed, really amazingly, I uh, said, well, what about children? 
And you said, no, I just represent my voters. That's just a, it's a very different approach to governance. And I believe, actually, in a lot of the things that you stand for. And I think there's a huge amount of import for people like you who um, are, are, are very anti-development. Because I get to live here because there was a lot of people who pushed for that. I think that's amazing. I just want us to say what we mean. I have not, I'm not anti-development. I am focused on the ratios of things. And you at Squirm Night were yes. the only person that raised the age issue. Mm -hmm. There was all of us there, and you, were, you raised the age issue, which, mm -hmm. and I think everyone was taken back by you raging, raising that. At what, what is the age, age issue? You raised the age, uh, your age versus everyone else who was running for council. Mm -hmm. at Squirm Night, and that, no one else was raising the age issue. And so for you to divide the council, divide Squirm Night with, by raising a, an age issue isn't something that Aspen has been based on for a number of years until you came along. Would you, it's um, very divisive. Would you very divisive. suggest, because we've also sat in meetings where you've talked about your views of next gen and how it shouldn't exist, et cetera. Do you feel like we are getting the appropriate amount of participation and representation from the young people in town? I think if there's a next gen, there needs to be an, a representation from each group. And there is. There is not. We the city council has not authorized a representation from the group that's the other groups right. only for that group. You've served on council. Yes. You've served on PNC. You've been to HPC. You've been to BOCC. All of those bodies already encompass, unfortunately, only exclusively, just about every demo over that. So to suggest that it needs to be there is just this whataboutism that really it just again to. It, I, I feel as a voter disrespected when you take that approach. It's not. When, you, when Next Gen proposes, and it was fairly clear in the paper, uh, moving retirees out of affordable housing. We didn't propose that, that and you know that. that. I do know that. You exactly. Don't. And it's what was in the paper. It was the writ letter it you wrote. It was in the paper because it that's in, the information that and you had them. That was the information that you wrote a letter. And yeah. so that letter of removing people from affordable housing, there wasn't an, an, a group of people who. Here's the reality. The city council has authorized. Here's the reality. So, in my view, yeah. just my view. When we work on public policy, we don't start with our interest group or our voters. We look at the broad community. We look at Aspen as an entity, and we say, what does this place need to thrive? Not just now, but in the long term. So the single most critical issue we face is affordable housing. My view is that you have to have two pillars that are immovable. You keep your commitment to retirees who built this town, who made it what it is, who allowed me and all of us to live in like the best place in the world. And you have to house 60% of the workforce in town, a goal that this council has let lapse and seems to have very little interest in reviving. Now, to do that, there will be trade-offs. It will be difficult. It will be expensive. But if we don't do it, we end up in a community that looks like the West End does now. 85% second homes, constant construction right around your house, lights off, and, and no one's here. That's a dead community that I don't want to have my kids live in. And I grew up in a home with my grandparents. So there's nobody who understands the importance of generational knowledge transfer. Um, you know, they do these developments in, in um, uh, in Amsterdam, et cetera, affordable housing developments where by design, every other unit is younger person, older person, younger person, older person. I think that's amazing. I think we need a yes and community. Um, but if we're going to address that problem and house both of those groups, then it would simply be very short-sighted public policy to suggest that we shouldn't figure out a way that is preferable to everybody that they would prefer to use our existing stock. Because if we don't take that approach, then the alternative, which I know you're not supportive of, is building a lot more. And I would rather build less and live closer together. So you're wrong on the 60% you keep saying council's not supporting the 60%. Yes. Council actually raised it from 60 to 65 You raised the mitigation. You didn't raise, raise the goal the of people in rate. town. It's a different thing and you know that. The mitigate, well, you, the only way you get to a goal is by raising the rate. That's not and true, so, and the way that I know that is we could be spending more on affordable housing and building it, but we have $29 million in a fund that's not being spent that's simply depreciating of every money every year. So having money in the bank does not yield the outcome. What it does yield is a break on development. We are spending that money. That Some money of is, it. That money is committed. Some of it. All of it. All of it's committed. Great. Yeah. All right, question two. I didn't two. even <laughs> want to interrupt you because I feel like we never really get to go a little bit deeper. Um, but I, I do want to keep moving forward here. Bert, my question is for you. You kind of pride yourself on being that standalone voice on council. Um, 
And I feel like there's some pros and cons to that. Um, and you really don't waver from your position. But um, will you change in the next term, um, if you're elected, uh, to become kind of more successful in making progress on your agenda? That's such a loaded question. It says if I wasn't uh, successful in the past four years, and that's completely untrue. So okay. the past four years have been extremely successful. We uh, first, as I was elected with past Ref1, Ref1 has resulted in zero waivers of But you weren't on the, the past. Council, for, I was, council for Ref1, I right? Was, uh, I, you were it in was in the same election that I was, uh, I, was uh, I was running for council. Right. So that was Ref1. That, uh, that passed as I was elected, and the right. voter said, pa pass this, elect Bert. Yeah. And since that's happened, there's been zero, and that was at the objection, of the rest of council. So yes, I was a f I was firm and the rest of council was opposed. The rest of council, all the sitting council wrote letters opposed to me to get on council. Mm -hmm. I overcame that. I got on council. I was elected two to one okay. on council. Uh, I spent the first six months on council overturning a decision they'd made a week before, which was base two. Skippy was sort of the face of the mailing on base two. Uh, base two did not would have dug the housing hole deeper. Mm -hmm. After the base two uh, successfully was overturned, I think the other side spent outspent us ten to one. Uh, we won two to one. Uh, that was spent, four years ago, right? That was four years ago. Okay. Right after that, I was successful in getting the moratorium passed. Uh, that was led by Adam and Steve. I was the grounding rock that made that that they were enabled them to do that. Uh, that was attempted for a number of year, a number of years earlier. It failed. Um, so that was a huge success. We, uh, as, as I said earlier, we've raised the housing mitigation during that moratorium from 60 to 65 percent. Great. Uh, so we think we've done that. There's been one success after another that are because I'm sort of the grounding rock. One of the things I ran on four years ago was replacing the city manager. And uh, that happened, perhaps not in a little clumsy way but, uh, and poor timing, but it happened uh, during my term. So a lot of things have happened that uh, people couldn't get done uh, before me. Great. So I, I would continue probably to try to get things done that people can't get done um, without me. Okay. So. Well, good. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah. So. Skippy, um, you pr uh, previously, previously served on planning and zoning. Um, what was something unexpected you encountered, encountered while you were serving? And what did you mm. learn from that experience? That's interesting. Um, I think coming in really having no idea what to expect, um, sitting back and sort of observing for the first five or six months, what became clear to me was that there was a breakdown in expectations and communication between the applicant, the community, and the commission. So, you know, an applicant would come in, they would have this review, um, they would get some feedback about why it wasn't going to go forward. They would leave and they'd spend a bunch of time and money and then they would come back. Uh, and next time there'd be a totally different set of things people didn't like and they had forgotten about the first set and then they go back to the drawing board again and spend more time and send more money uh, and come back. And then, you know, a, a member who wasn't there at the previous meeting comes in and starts to impart feelings into the decision as opposed to the actual job, which is to strictly adhere to the guidelines set by Bert and the council. Um, and I actually would like to thank you for being the grounding rock on the, the down zoning. Um, I think the moratorium was, was thank you for that. Um, so when I was able to become chair, um, actually, I, was, I, uh, I got elected co-chair at a meeting I wasn't at, and then uh, the next year started chairing, but we really tried to reform that process. And so what we did first and foremost was remind people that we're not there to create policy, we're there to enforce existing guidelines. Secondly, to set firm expectations. So if an applicant comes forward, regardless of whether we like it or not, explain to them, hey, we can't approve it, here's why. This is what you would need to change to get to a yes vote. And then they could come back assured next time that they wouldn't have to do two and three times. Better for the commission, better for the development, less added cost into a development and when we're trying to create more affordability. Um, but then also being really clear, going back to the earlier statement, when there are developments that meet the requirements that we approve, because again, we're not a policy setting body, but there are things that we feel like are wrong or are bad outcomes for the community, 
the Hotel Lenado turning into a private retreat, lack of affordable housing, we made sure to go on record, both to the public in the room and on the record for council in the hopes that they could take that up. Um, and over time, you know, applicants that didn't get what they wanted at least thought they had a fair shake. We cut down on time of processing, we cut down on unnecessary spend, um, and hopefully we provided some good guidance to council. Uh, Skippy, do they onboard you as you start um, a commission? So are you given a packet and are people teaching you that you're a policy board and this is what you need to be doing? Does the city onboard their committees? I don't or think, do you just jump in and I don't and think start we do enough. Um, I mean, you know, I think if you're willing to reach out, certainly city staff are normally pretty good and they'll talk to you. Most people don't do that and you're given some basic information, but I don't I don't think it's enough. Um, Bert and I both went through Citizens Academy. Right. Great educational program. I would love to see, you know, a mini uh, Citizens Academy required before you get on, or, or you know, some expectation around that. I think would be would be really important. I think it's important because we talk about communication, and it yeah. really needs to start with the staff, the committees, all the way up to council. It just can't be put on council's doorstep that yeah. um, we're not communicating. And I, you know, with new board members, we have to onboard them. So I was just curious what the city's process is, um, if anybody's in favor of better onboarding. A lot of times it's a very first co um, commission you sit on. You don't even know you're a policy commission. Yeah. So therefore, a lot of things can go crazy right out of the gates. Um, do you guys support some type of onboarding for your um, commissions? Yes, okay. absolutely. Great. Um, Bert, we've lost hey, that was three. Be God, that we was agreed. Nice. Oh my gosh, that was great. Um, we've lost 300 lodging units over the last 10 years, and hotel room rates. Therefore, some are actually the highest in the country, uh, regardless of the quality of those rooms. Um, what type of new lodging projects would you actually be in favor of? The uh, uh, projects that mitigate entirely. So okay. uh, the, we can't continue to uh, build without uh, addressing the mitigation for housing. It, it puts a burden on all the other So if employers. a project came, up, came in at 100% mitigation if, for its housing. If Lift um, One housed everyone mm -hmm. uh, in a walking distance so it doesn't add to our traffic, doesn't the Burlingame bus is a million bucks a year. Yeah. Bert, on so, the wow. Lift One issue, um, didn't we try in a co-op years ago to get 100% housing on the site, but then it, came, it became too big? We have 100% housing requirement, and it's the vested approval. So if voters say no, right. it'll go back to 100%. 91 units or 91 FTEs versus about half that under the proposed. Okay. So we, we're, we're cutting our, we're going from 100% in the vested rights to what we have now is about half that. In so the you can support a lodging project that is mitigating properly and going through all the proper um, review process. The previous, the previous version of Lift One mitigates at twice the uh, full time equivalent. Yeah. Did you vote yes on that? Uh, I don't remember. I was not part of it. Okay. So, but it was uh, that mitigates it twice. So we are cutting our we're cutting our employee mitigation in half. Yeah. On this ballot um, for that, and it's a compromise I'm not willing to make. So they're not mitigating 100 percent. Just 50 percent. The vested right was, and this well, this current. And this one, is so they're doing what they the code says. So they're following the code. You can either look at it as a floor or a ceiling. Okay. Developers look at it as a floor. Council looks at it as a ceiling. Got it. <laughs> so just just so I understand, spaces. are you saying that so. any lodge project that has 100% mitigation on site, you would vote yes on? If it meets the rest of the requirements, it can't be. We but yeah, so there's Trump no vari Tower. no so variances. Right. No, Trump Tower is yeah. coming in and, and wants to replace something. Well, no, sure, I'm not going to support. Of course, Trump Tower. but but no variances, 100% on site or. Then it just goes through automatically. It doesn't have a council review. Yeah. It doesn't have a... Okay. Yeah, but most of right. the times, so they're asking for some negotiation in there. Most of the time, people ask for waivers on affordable housing, and most of the time, the city approves it because it's not money in our books. It's not money out of our books. Nobody walks by five years later and says, where's the affordable housing for that particular space? Yeah. Um, so Bert's dead on on affordable problem. housing. We have... When the school fees come up and are on the... On the um, school never waives their fees. Mm -hmm. The housing is, and the housing board doesn't weigh the fees. The housing board is very strong on don't do this, and uh, the city council it doesn't listen. Yeah. And you sit on city council. I need two more birds. <laughs> <laughs> Cloning. It's the next thing. Is that you, Skippy? Are you the new Bert? <laughs> Probably not. Um, look, I think I think on the affordable housing piece, Bert's absolutely right. Um, my view is we don't have a lack of 
lodging. We have a lack of diversity of lodging. I don't think there's anybody on Christmas who walked around and thought, boy, I'd like some more people here. It's more like duck and covered, to be honest. You know, my business might do well then, but it's not an enjoyable time of year to be here and not something that I would like to see more of. I'd like to see less. Um, but I think the diversity of lodging is really important because if there's one thing that sure, it's almost all of us are immigrants, right? Think about our current city council. You know, every single person was not born in Aspen. If you think about the people that we revere who built the town, the Wheelers, the Pepkies, the Fisters, the Pfeifers, um, none of them are from here. Uh, and so we've got to think long term about this. If we want to have a thriving community in 50 years or 100 years, they have to be able to come here and fall in love with it first. Um, Bert and I are both really lucky. You know, my grandparents bought a place in Snowmass in the 60s. He was able to buy a house here, um, which is awesome, but it's just not the case for most people. And so I think having lodging projects that allow the five kids from the University of Colorado or, you know, the ski club up in Detroit to come here, yeah. um, experience it, fall in love, and then move here is important. And so I'd like to see a more diversity of lodges. So Skippy, uh, we have two minutes left, and I just have a quick follow-up. You've used the word, the West End is dead, and you've also said that we need to thrive into the future. Are you suggesting right now that we're not thriving, that the community is somehow um, stale? I think that anyone who's been here for 30 or 40 years would say that, one, we live in the best place in the world, and we do. I yeah. mean, I am so excited to come back here no matter where I go, but we are on the wrong track. Um, you know, if you've been here for 50 years, you talk about Andres and the Tipler, and you miss that. If you've been here for five years, you talk about Overeasy. Um, and, you know, look, a town that only has the servant class and the extremely wealthy is not a town that thrives. That's why I'm running entirely to rebuild our middle. There's nothing wrong with these. I'm not against those. There's huge value. My kids are going to go to the best school in Colorado one day because of these people. But a community exists with all of it. And if we don't put our energy into rebuilding that middle, then no, our town will not thrive much longer. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to let you finish this up, Bert. We have about a minute left. Um, what do you think about our community? Is it dying? Is it thriving? Have we managed it properly over these years? It's thriving. We have, uh, I think as everyone says, it's the best place in the world. And, and the prices reflect that. Uh, the free market determines the, whether uh, that's there. And it's uh, certainly there. People are spending money. People are coming. Our tax revenues have been strong. And uh, the product we have, I think, is what we need to reinvest in and uh, keep it unique for Aspen versus turning into Vail. So I'm not. We've got to keep a unique product here. I agree completely, and I hope we all can work together on that. Tepi, if I just, one last note is like, you know, while we may have challenges, there is no community better prepared to handle them. We have every resource at our fingertip, far more than they did back in the 70s and 80s when they made these hard decisions. We have every dollar we could possibly want. Yep. And we have the brain power to get it done. All it takes is vision, political will and action, and I think if we can come together, we can absolutely see a future better than it is today. I've had a blast with the two of you, and I'd actually it's like fun. to just keep on going, so maybe with the runoffs, we'll be seeing you guys again. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this election forum. Please, everyone, get out and vote and stay informed. Thanks so much.